In the wake of the Dragonflight's aftermath, among the lingering echoes of battle fought against the Incarnates and sacrifices made along the way, a long awaited reunion unfolds in the lush forests of Belameth. Here, at the base of the newly risen world tree Amirdrasil, under the gentle embrace of fallen leaves, the High Priestess of Elun, Teranda Whisperwind, stands on the threshold of a momentous encounter. On the other side, her beloved husband appears. The Archdruid Malfurion Stormrange is finally awakened from his slumber. Theirs is a tale woven into the very fabric of Warcraft history, an epic saga of love, sacrifice and unyielding devotion. As they reunite, ready to embark on a new chapter of their story, let us journey back to the very beginning, where the seeds of their unconditional love were first sown, and witness the unfolding of a timeless romance that has shaped the destiny of Azeroth itself. Many millennia ago, Malfurion and his twin brother Illidan were born in Lorlathil of Valshara. Following the heartfelt loss of their parents, they relocated to the Kaldorai city of Suramar, seeking a new beginning amidst its ancient streets and towering spires. There they befriended a younger girl named Teranda, and the trio formed an unbreakable bond as they went through the challenges and the joys of their childhood. However, as they reached adulthood, their lives took different courses. Teranda found solace in the Temple of Elune, becoming a novice priestess in the Sisters of Elune Order. Malfurion delved into the study of Druidism under the care of the demigod Scenarius. Meanwhile, Illidan was still struggling to find his purpose, ultimately delving into the arcane arts and serving as the personal sorcerer of none other than the military leader Kurdalos Ravencrest. Throughout their youth, both brothers harbored unrequited feelings for Tyranda, but in the end, she would return the affections of only one. Many years passed and the first coming of the Burning Legion to Azeroth unfolded in what became known as the War of the Ancients. During this monumental conflict, Tyranda played a pivotal role aiding in healing the wounded in Suramar alongside other priestesses in the temple. As the Night Elven Rebellion led by Kurdalos searched in Suramar, Tyranda and the Priestess of the Moon wholeheartedly joined the cause. They adorned themselves in armor, inspiring and rallying civilians to take up arms and join the fight against the demons. Among the recruits was a young orphan named Chandris Feathermoon, who admired Tyranda so deeply that the Priestess eventually adopted her. Shendris, driven by her youthful determination, yearned to join the fray of battles. Despite her armor being slightly oversized, she still enlisted with the Sisterhood of Elune. Along with her fellow sisters, she obeyed the orders of Gerald Shadowsong, although the leadership had now fallen to Gerald's arrogant older sister, Maiev. Following the death of High Priestess Dejana of the Hands of the Legion, Tyranda was chosen as her successor, believed to be favored by Elune herself. Despite her initial doubts, Tyranda accepted the role deeply honored by the trust bestowed upon her. Meanwhile, under the care of Scenarius, Malfurion became the first mortal druid in Azeroth. He was among the first to observe the growing divine between Queen Ajara, her followers and the rest of their people. He started questioning the purity of the powers granted by the Well of Eternity, sensing that something was amiss. While he couldn't entirely foresee the impending cataclysm that was soon to unfold, Malfurion understood that the Kaldorai would undergo irreversible changes, and that came to be true in the following events in Azeroth. Azara and the Highborn, fixated on harnessing the Well's power, had mastered its energies and ended up drawing the attention of Sargeras, enemy of all life and lord of the Burning Legion. By opening a portal in Ajara's place, Zevius, the High Counselor of the Night Elves, let the demons flood Kalimdor along with the commanders Archimonde and Manoroth. Despite the Night Elves' resistance, the Legion gained ground while the Highborn opened up a larger portal over the well in an attempt to bring Sargeras himself into Azeroth. As the energies of Ajara's gateway surged, Tyranda understood the urgent need to put a stop to the demonic reinforcements that were overwhelming the Night Elves. Malfurion, knowing that the enemies were too powerful to fall in battle, proposed a daring plan to destroy the well. This notion horrified Illidan, yes, it was most likely the portal source, but it was also serving as the origin of his magic and probably the Elves' immortality. Its loss represented a sacrifice Illidan deemed too great to bear. 
Cenarius and Alexstrasza also stalled on the idea of destroying the well, as that would mean leaving their powers behind. Tyrande, on the other hand, understood the necessity of sacrificing their immortality to save Azeroth and convinced them to go along with the plan. And so, with their assistance, Malfurion led the Night Elves in storming Azjara's base. However, Illidan, driven by his addiction to magic and unrequited love for Tyrande, refused to relinquish his power and betray their resistance. He soon realized that closing the portal required more power, thus resorting to unconventional means. Illidan even drained his own soldiers, a sacrifice he deemed necessary to increase his power further. However, his ultimate plan involved obtaining the demon soul, an artifact of immense power created by Deathwing. Malfurion launched an immediate attack on Illidan hoping to maintain the element of surprise, but despite his swift actions they were still too late, as his twin brother had already warned Ajara. The Highborn were ready for the rebels, unleashing chaotic magics that decimated Malfurion's forces. As Malfurion fought at the entrance, Tyrande led a stealthy assault into Ajara's place with a small group of night elves. However, they were caught off guard by the Queen's men. They fought fiercely, but Tyrande suffered severe injuries. At the sight of his love falling in battle, Malfurion was consumed by rage and launched a final assault on Ajara. Despite the Kaldorai resistance deep mistrust of Illidan, as he openly betrayed them, the two Stormrange brothers joined forces to close the portal using the Demon Soul's power. Their intense battle disrupted the Highborn's magic, destabilizing the portal beneath the Well of Eternity. Malfurion conjured a colossal gale, pulling demons into the twisting nether through the collapsing portal, but it did not stop there. The Well of Eternity then started to collapse on itself and pulling landmasses into its depths. Sargeras even tried to step into Azeroth through the chaos, but luckily the portal sealed shut, trapping him inside. The cataclysmic explosion of the well led to the Great Sundering, which split the main supercontinent of Kalimdor into various smaller pieces. Malfurion, alongside Tyrande and Scenario, survived the Sundering and sailed to what would later be known as Kalimdor. United in purpose, they resolved to guide their people to a new homeland. To their dismay, though, a lake atop Mount Hyjal had become corrupted by the magical residue of the Well of Eternity, which they believed had been eradicated. Illidan, still driven by his addiction, had taken the lake and by pouring vials of the old well's water into it, recreating a new Well of Eternity in the process. Illidan predicted that demons would eventually return to Azeroth, asserting that arcane magic was the only effective defense against them a necessary means to an end, yet Malfurion feared that Illidan's so-called altruism actually concealed his true motive, an insatiable thirst for power and obsession with magic. In fear of this, Malfurion imprisoned his brother in the caverns below Hyjal known as the Barrow Deeps. There he remained chained and powerless for over 10,000 years, watched over by the warden Maiev Shadowsong. His people, terrified of his actions, named him Betrayer. Coming across a second well of eternity, Tyrande and her people hesitated to destroy it, fearing a repeat of the devastating effects of the Sundering. Instead, they decided to safeguard this well, preventing it from falling again into the wrong hands. With the assistance of the Aspects, they created a new world tree named Nordrasil to protect the well's power from being ever abused and prevent it from growing any more powerful. Malfurion and Tyrande led their people in rebuilding their society in the forest of Ashenvale around Hyjal with the guidance of Scenarius. Malfurion continued to master his druidic powers and rose to become a revered archdruid among his people, while Tyrande stood by his side as a beacon of strength and wisdom. She also implemented significant changes within the Calderai society. She formed a new all-female army known as the Sentinels from the ranks of the Sisterhood of Elune, and she will assume the role of general. Their primary responsibility was to safeguard the emerging Night Elf society. Isera orchestrated the grandeur rebuilding of the world through establishing a link between Nordrasil and the Emerald Dream. However, to uphold the integrity of the dream, she needed conscious beings to wander its timeless pathways. In order to sustain this balance, all the druids agreed to sleep for centuries, while losing years in Azeroth and becoming forever linked to the dream. 
Despite desiring to stay with his lover, Malfurion and his fellow druids enter a peaceful slumber for many years. That was until they were awoken by an attack from Highborn survivors. With so many lost lives, Malfurion chose exile for the Highborn rather than destruction. Heartbroken once again, Malfurion parted ways with Tarandal to return to the Emerald Dream, entering a long hibernation along with his fellow druids within Barrow Den in Moonglade. Teranda, alongside her formidable army and bolstered by the Keepers of the Grove and the Dryas, maintained peace throughout Ashenvale for 10 millennia. Despite her steadfast commitment to her people, the absence of Malfurion left Teranda feeling adrift and isolated over the centuries. Yet, her resolve only strengthened her determination unwavering against any threat that loomed on the horizon. As time passed, a new danger emerged, casting its shadow upon Ashenvale's shores. While Tyranda and her people remain somewhat aware of the events unfolding across the Great Sea, their intervention remained subtle, if any at all. It was the Great War, a heated conflict between the Orcs and humans. As the Third War was approaching, druids in the Emerald Dream detected the sinister plague of undeath spreading across the Eastern Kingdoms. Upon learning of this dire development, the High Priestess quickly recognized the malevolent influence of the Burning Legion behind the unfolding chaos. After the Second War ended, Sentinels are reported to Tyranda that Horde and Alliance remnants arrived in Kalimdor, making their way to Ashenvale. Suspecting that they only sought refuge and were just passing through, she ordered observation for the time being. Yet sometime later, when orcs began corrupting Ashenvale's woods with fell, Teranda ordered an attack against Gromash Hellscream. As further reports came in from Shadowleaf Sentinels, led by Chandris, confirmed Scenario's murder by the orcs. Teranda knew that something was not right, as she could sense a darker power lurking in the shadows. Her intuition proved to be correct. The Warsong clan was indeed corrupted by demons and were used as a pawn to destroy scenarios. Soon after, Teranda came upon an orc and human settlement who were quickly overwhelmed by hordes of undead. They tried to retreat, but eventually they were cornered by the Scourge, and their leader revealed himself to be none other than Archimon himself. Teranda was surprised by seeing the Defiler again after 10,000 years. In the chaos, Archimon took advantage and slaughtered her kin, and the priestess narrowly escaped death by hiding in the shadows with the loon's powers. Enraged, Archimon sent his doom guard after her, and using her abilities, Tyranda sought to warn her daughter before the shadow leaves were attacked. Realizing it was time to awaken the druids, Tyranda left Chandris to defend Ashenvale and hurried to Moonglade. In order to awaken her maid, she needed to retrieve the Horn of Scenarios, but it was blocked by an orcish settlement. Racing against time, Tyranda destroyed the orc camp, defeated the primal guardians of the Moonglade, recovered the Horn, and finally awakened Malfurion's Stormrange, her love. Malfurion understood that Archimon's plan was to assault the World Tree in Ordersil in order to steal its energies. They journeyed to Winterspring to awaken the Druids of the Talon, but found the Furball tribe corrupted. Teranda ended their suffering and decision that shocked Malfurion, witnessing the change in his beloved. Tyranda feeling neglected, she responded, Long ago I swore to protect this land, Furion. I never had the luxury of sleeping through times of great peril. After successfully awakening the druids of the Talon, Tyranda and Malfurio made their way to the base of Mount Hyjal to locate the druids of the Claw. However, they soon reached an elven door, and the archdruid identified it as his treacherous brother Illidan's prison. Despite his objections, Tyranda insisted on freeing Illidan, believing he could aid their cause. Illidan, still harboring feelings for Tyranda, agreed to fight the demons, but for his own reasons. Malfurion was angered by Tyranda's decision and severe ties with his brother. Shortly after, Illidan led a force of night elves into Felwood, where they encountered the dreadlord Tyhondrius. When hearing about it, Tyranda and Malfurion rushed to aid him. What they didn't know is that Illidan had encountered Arthas earlier, who informed him about the Skull of Gul'dan, a powerful demonic artifact that served as the source of fell corruption in the forest. 
Despite knowing it was a trap, Illidan consumed the fellow energy of the skull and transformed into a monstrous demon to defeat Tyhondrius. When Tyrande and Malfurion arrived there, they felt the dark, demonic energy surrounding Illidan and turned away, filled with a mix of disgust and despair. Shocked by his brother's choice and fueled by anger, Malfurion banished Illidan from the forest forever. Sometime later, Malfurion and Tyrande met up with the leaders of the Horde and Alliance, Jaina and Thrall. The priestess hesitated at first, but with Scenario's death fresh in her mind, came to realize that the only chance of winning was to unite. As a result, an alliance was formed between the Orcs, Humans and the Night Elves. Meanwhile, Archimon being overconfident with his victories, he began the final ascent towards Hydra's summit, where the World Tree and the Well of Eternity rested. Malfurion understood the sacrifice that had to be made to defeat the mighty Demon Lord. To vanquish Archimon, he needed to unleash the powers of the War Tree upon the enemy. Tyranda hesitated at first, knowing that this act would mean the loss of the Night Elf's Second Well of Eternity along with their immortality and power. In response to that, Malfurion tried to assure her by saying, Whatever comes, my love, remember, our bond is eternal. And as they all agreed on Malfurion's plan, he sounded the horn of Scenarius and the ancestral guardians emerged from the trees and attacked Archimonde. Their explosive force completely obliterated him and incinerated the forest above Hyjal, thus shattering the world tree and bringing an end to the Night Elf's immortality. Despite the almost impossible odds against the powerful Demon Lord, they won. After the victorious battle, the allies dispersed. Jaina's people settled in Theramore, Thrall established Durodar, while Tyrande and Malfurion remain in Hyjal to rebuild. They eventually returned to Ashenvale to begin the arduous task of healing the scars left by the Burning Legion. After many months while expecting Nordrasil, Malfurion and Tyrande were urgently summoned by Maiev, who sought aid against Illidan. The former demon hunter had allied with Naga, aiming to annihilate Maiev and her forces. When hearing of this, Malfurion and Tyrande rushed to the Broken Isles and fought their way against the Naga until they confronted Illidan. He ended up capturing Tyrande, but only because he wanted to show his power to her. However, she unveiled a truth that had haunted him for millennia. She believed that true strength lies within and not in raw magical power. This conviction ultimately led her to choose Malfurion over him. Tyrande admitted that releasing him had been a huge mistake, a realization that weighed heavily on her. Illidan unexpectedly released her with a warning not to go after him. They obviously did not do that. The three of them, Maiev, Malfurion and Tyrande, took chase across the sea and landed on a strange, uncharted land known as Lorderon. As they searched for Illidan, they encountered a group of blood elves led by Prince Kelthas. They were fleeing from the scourge and despite Maiev's objections, Tyrande resolved to aid them. She ordered the Blood Elves to cross the river while she held the line against the undead forces. Using the fire of the stars, Tyrande fought fiercely, decimating the enemy ranks. However, the unexpected happened. The bridge beneath her collapsed, sweeping Tyrande into the river. Maya, fueled with vengeance, urged the Blood Elves to prioritize hunting Illidan over rescuing the High Priestess. Stranded on a small island, Tyrande bravely defended her position against relentless undead attacks until Illidan appeared and saved her. He guided her through a portal to safety, and while Tyrande was surprised by this sudden turn of events, she was still very grateful for his unexpected rescue. Malfurion acknowledged that Illidan's actions saved his beloved's life, but warned him against threatening the Night Elves again. Illidan understood and disappeared through another portal. Maiev, on the other hand, furious at Malfurion's decision, followed Illidan through the portal. Despite Tyrande's plea, Malfurion advised her not to intervene, recognizing that Maiev's thirst for vengeance had indeed consumed her. Tyrande invited Malfurion to return home with her to resume their duties. The Night Elf's transition to mortal life was challenging, with many Kaldorai struggling with aging and frailty. Some druids even sought to regain immortality by planting a special tree to reconnect with the eternal world. Malfurion opposed this conspiracy and warned them that nature will never allow for such a selfish act. Following this, the Archdruid ventured into the Emerald Dream to replenish his strength. 
However, during an investigation into unsettling reports, his dreaming form fell prey to an unknown enemy. None knew what happened and despite searching for Morfurion, only his physical body was found in his barrow den, leaving Tyrande deeply troubled by his inexplicable disappearance. Later revelations reveal that the man behind his kidnapping was Fendral Stahil, none other than Malfurion's top lieutenant. As a result, Malfurion's absence left the leadership of the druids to Fendral, who rose as the new Archdruid. Not having anyone to oppose, Fendral convinced the druids to plan a new world tree, and so they did. Teldrassil was planted off the coast of northern Kalindor and swiftly became the new home for the Kaldorai. Nurtured by druid's magic, it flourished into a vast and majestic tree that pierced the sky. Thus, Dernassus emerged as the new Nidal's capital city. However, the new war tree, lacking nature's blessing, soon fell prey to corruption, tainted by the malevolent influence of both the Berlin Legion and the Emerald Nightmare. Eventually, the Night Elves did not get the mortality they sought, and corruption began to seep through the roots of Teldrassil, threatening its very essence. Meanwhile, with Malfurion gone, Tyrande assumed sole leadership over the Night Elves. Four years after the mortal races united against the Burning Legion, the fragile alliance between the Horde and the Alliance began to fade away. The Night Elves of Darnassu sided with the Alliance, reigniting conflict with the Horde, particularly over Ashenvale's territory. Tyrande decided to step aside as a general, entrusting the responsibility of the Sentinels to her daughter Chandris, in order to focus entirely on leading her people. Many years passed, and Malfurion remained in a comatose state, unaffected by the events of the Burning Crusade and the invasion of Northrend. However, after the Lich King's demise, Tyrande began experiencing nightmarish visions foretelling Malfurion's impending doom. Motivated by these haunting dreams, she embarked on a perilous journey to rescue her beloved. After recruiting allies along the way, Tyrande successfully reached the portal to the Emerald Dream, but just before they could step into the portal, they were attacked by nightmarish creatures, better known as satyrs. Luckily, Alexstrasza intervened and aided their entry into the dream. The Dragon Queen had come to rescue Isera, who was also present in the Emerald Plane. When Tyrande finally located her beloved, Thura, a young Gorg, also appeared in the dream. It was revealed that she is the niece of Broxigar and had a vision of Malfurion killing her uncle in her dreams. Her plan was quite simple, travel to the Emerald Dream and murder Malfurion. And so the two women fought. It was later uncovered that Malfurion was responsible for Thura's dreams, intending for her to come and rescue him and break him free from the prison. Despite his discomfort with deceiving her, Malfurion believed the Axe of Scenarius, the former Axe of Broxigar, now wielded by his niece, was the only means to save himself. Tyrande, not knowing about Malfurion's plan, fought Thura, but luckily the orc was able to cut down the tree and eventually freeing Malfurion from his prison. However, this action unleashed chaos within the dream drawing the ire of the corrupted dragons. Isera was also trapped by Lithon, a corrupted dragon of the nightmare. In response, Tyrande's allies sought refuge by riding a dragon to safety. Malfurion's spirit eventually reunited with his physical body in Moonglade, which was now shrouded with the influence of the Nightmare. The rest of Tyrande's group was attacked by Emerys, another corrupted dragon, and ended up teleporting to Stormwind to evade further danger. It turned out that the Nightmare Lord Zevius was responsible for Malfurion's imprisonment, yet he proved to be merely a pawn in a larger scheme. The true mastermind behind these events was still lurking behind the shadows, but that's a talk I'll leave for another day. Zevius took pleasure in tormenting the Archdruid in numerous ways, by revealing Tyrande's transformation into a demon, a Zillidan's lover, and physically torturing him by gradually transforming him into a tree. His ultimate goal, though, was to bind Azeroth and the Emerald Dream into one single plane, enslaving Azeroth's residents and turning them into nightmares. Malfurion, finally free of Zevius' grasp and on his way to Ashenvale, observed the corrupted state of Teldrassil. As he drew closer, he found druids attempting to heal it, but quickly came to realize that they were actually worsening its corruption further. 
Upon investigating Teldrassil's crown, he discovered a branch of Xevius grafted onto the war tree, the true source behind its corruption. By removing the branch, Malfurion led all druids in purifying Teldrassil. With Alexstrasza's blessing, the war tree became the sanctuary it was meant to be. In a previous moment, Randa's group was attacked in Stormwind, where the nightmare also began to spread, eventually leading them back to the Emerald Nightmare. The corrupted dragons had sensed Broxigar's axe and attacked Thura in order to steal it. In an attempt to save her, Tyranda orchestrated a diversion, allowing Thura to escape. However, the axe and Tyranda remained trapped within the nightmare. After learning about the kidnapping of his loved one, Malfurion rushed to her rescue. They successfully fled and teleported to a safer location. Shortly after, they also found the true location of Isera. Malfurion, along with Isera's consort Eranicus, freed Isera, but at the cost of Eranicus' life. Though Isera was freed through the Green Dragon's sacrifice, she couldn't be of any aid. Malfurion instead drew energy from both Azeroth and the Emerald Dream in an attempt to cleanse the Nightmare. He confronted Zebius in Azeroth with the help of Tyranda, while Thura attacked his shadowy counterpart in the Emerald Dream. With Zebius defeated, his lingering spirit and the remnants of the Nightmare were confined into the Rift of Alm. After the war against the Nightmare concluded, Malfurion and Tyranda returned to Azeroth to start rebuilding and aiding their kin. They then held a grand celebration in Darnassus where they exchanged vows and were officially wed. Many prominent figures attended this ceremony, including the leaders of the Alliance and even their old friend Thrall. Isera and Alexstrasza also graced the occasion with their presence and gave their blessings. Be that as it may, the Mori couple were not the sole recipients of gifts that day. The Dreamer and the Lifebinder finally blessed Teldrassil, allowing it to flourish even more and providing protection against upcoming threats, but despite this was still unable to restore the Nadal's immortality. After so many years, they finally got married and they will continue to lead their people together in their nassus. Their love story, though, had always been intertwined with the fate of Azeroth, and soon her destiny will be disrupted. Following the dire news of King Magnus' petrification, Malfurion and Tyranda attended the memorial gathering in Old Ironforge. It was at this solemn occasion that they will have encountered the young prince of Stormwind for the first time. After the cataclysm wreaked havoc across Azeroth and set in motion a series of natural disasters, Malfurion organized his druids to assess the damage to the Nidal settlements. Though some bases were still standing, Tyranda feared for the integrity of Chandris, as she could sense her child was in imminent danger. Despite her husband's advice to remain in Darnassus during these turbulent times, Tyranda was determined to find her daughter, and so Malfurion followed. Together, they confronted and defeated the Naga invasion on Sardor Isle, rescuing the critically injured Chandris. Tyranda prayed to Elune and miraculously healed her daughter, pulling her back from the brink of death. Tyranda extended a warm welcome to King Greymane and other Gilnea refugees in Darnassus, seeking their support in the Night Elves conflict with the Horde. And speaking of the Horde, the arrival of Garrosh Hellscream as the fierce new warchief of the Horde spared Tyranda and Malfurion to convene a summit. Their goal was to advocate for the appointment of a High King to unify the Alliance ranks and to formally include the Worgen into the Alliance fold. When Tyranda received word of Garrosh's advances into Ashenvale, she swiftly rallied reinforcements for her alliance allies and personally led them into battle against the Horde. During the intense conflict, Tyranda was gravely wounded by Orc archers, posing a significant setback for the alliance forces. However, the battle's outcome shifted dramatically when Varian Rin and Worker reinforcements arrived, turning the tide in favor of the alliance. Under Varian's leadership, they successfully repelled the Horde forces, forcing them into retreat. Following their victory, the triumphant alliance returned to Darnassus, where Tyrande and Malfurion made the decision to appoint Jero Shadowsong as the leader of a new security force. Chandris was also tasked with assisting Gerald in strengthening this vital defense. One of the major consequences of the Cataclysm was that the Elemental Plane drew closer to Azeroth, leading to direct conflicts with the Elemental Lords. Ragnaros the Fire Lord assaulted Nordrasil, prompting Malfurion to organize a defense of Mount Hyjal once more. Scenarius was also brought back into the world with the awakening Sarah to aid in defending Hyjal. 
and so Malfurion led the charge against Ragnaros and they emerged victorious, successfully banishing the Fire Lord back to the Firelands. Skipping ahead to the aftermath of this siege in Orgrimmar, Tyrande served as the accuser in Garrosh's trial. By using Chromis Hourglass, she presented incriminating scenes from the past against him, countered by defender Bane Bloodhoof. Despite her initially strong case, Tyrande's personal profound hatred towards Garrosh and occasional outbursts weakened her position further. While her pursuit of justice impressed the Celestials, they emphasized the potential for redemption, arguing against death as the ultimate punishment. After the trial ended, during their dinner in Darnassus, Malfurion expressed his concern about how the trial might affect Tyranda, noting that she seemed to be inciting a desire to condemn others, rather than using her compassion. I mean, after all, Garrosh did nothing wrong. But yeah, jokes aside and fast-forwarding into Legion, following the events of the Broken Shore, Tyranda Malfurion participated in Varian Rin's funeral. After assuming the throne of Stormwind, King Anduin decided to integrate the Illidari into the Alliance forces, recognizing their value in fighting the demons. Tyrande reassured Anduin about their prospects against the Burning Legion and supported his decision about the Illidari. Meanwhile, Malfurion expressed quiet discomfort when he thought of the Demon Hunters no longer being confined. In the unfolding events of the Legion invasion, the Archdruid went on a mission to his hometown in Valshara to retrieve one of the five pillars of creation. The Tears of Elune, an artifact so powerful, was vital for closing the Tomb of Sargeras and thwarting the Burning Legion. However, his plans were disrupted when he found Scenarius was trapped in the Emerald Nightmare and, more importantly, unable to awaken. Malfurion sensed that the corruption was quite familiar, and he uncovered that behind this was once again the Sadr Zevius. Despite the attempt to save Scenarius with the help of ancient archdruids and Isera, Zevius managed to seize the Tears of Elune, leading to Scenarius's complete corruption. But that wasn't even the worst part. Infuriated by this, Malfurion pursued Zevius, which ultimately resulted in Isera's corruption as well. Tyrande, arriving after a vision of her husband, discovered Malfurion being held captive and Isera transformed into a nightmare dragon. Tyrande, fueled by anger, went after the Nightmare Lord through the forest, but Zevius, having the upper hand, presented the High Priestess with a choice – pursue him to save her husband or protect the Temple of the Loon from the corrupted Isera. Despite her anguish, Tyrande chose her goddess over her love, a decision that caused her great pain. In the climactic battle at the temple, Tyrande and her allies were forced to kill Isera, reclaiming and cleansing the Tears of Elun in the process. In the Darkheart thicket, Malfurion was freed and Zebius's presence in Azeroth was vanquished, yet his true form was still looming within the nightmare. Malfurion, unable to enter the Rift of Al due to his vulnerability to its darkness, entrusted adventurers with cleansing the Emerald Dream and saving Azeroth while he focused on purifying scenarios. Zevius was eventually defeated in the Rift, but it remains to be seen if the corruption can ever be fully cleansed. Tyrande later leads the Sentinels to Suramar, nostalgic about returning to her birth town. The High Priestess forms an alliance with nearby Blood Elves, led by Lady Leandrin, and High Elves led by Varisa Windrunner. The three elven races are supported by the Shaldorai, led by Arcanist Thalysra, who manages to put their difference behind to take down the Burning Legion. Reflecting on past events, Tyrande was concerned about whether the Nightfallen leader will betray them and if she will be any better than Ajara or Elisande. Putting her feelings aside, Tyrande leads the combined elven army and fights straight to the foot of the Nighthold, but not for long, until the elven rebels are confronted by Grand Magistrix Elisan herself. Using her great mastery of time magic, Elisan traps the elven army in a time stasis and departs. A handsome man, arriving just in the nick of time, swoops in to save the day and rescues the army. Meanwhile, atop the Nighthold, Gul'dan began a powerful ritual to infuse Illidan's Body with a portion of the soul of Sargeras. Khadgar, with his allies arriving in the scene, trying to intervene and use the pillars of creation to return Illidan's soul to his body. But the fallen Titan took advantage and possessed Illidan instead, transforming him into the demon within. In the end, the heroes defeated the demon, and as a result, Illidan regained control of his body and killed Gul'dan. 
Tyrande stood among the defenders during the siege of the Night Hall and had witnessed Illidan's return. Subsequently, the betrayer allied himself with Azeroth's defenders in the fierce battles against the Legion, but not in the conventional way. Sometimes he had to force the hand of fate, and the only way Azeroth's fate would be secured is if they venture directly into the demon's domain, the Twisting Nether. Shortly after the victory over Gul'dan and the liberation of Suramar, Thalissa and her advisors visited the Nightwell to decide its fate. In the end, the first Arcanist chose to let the Nightwell fade, and in response to that, Tyrande expressed hope that the Nightborn will adapt and thrive without its corrupting influence. Illidan now aligned with Azeroth's heroes for the demons at the Broken Shore and later within the Tomb of Sargeras. However, recognizing that demons could resurrect in the Twisting Nether, Illidan understood that merely killing Kil'jaeden on Azeroth would not suffice. Hence, they went after him into the Nether as it was the sole means to permanently eliminate a demon. In the climactic battle, the Deceiver was defeated and the heroes had to return home. Illidan used the Sargerai Keystone to open a rift between Azeroth and Argus, but Illidan having his own ideals and ways, he left the portal open in order to take the battle to Argus. It was necessary to break off the Titan's grip on Argus' soul, the fuel of his infernal army and the key to Azeroth's salvation. Before Illidan left for Antorus for the final battle against the Legion, he created a crystal with a message for Tyrande and Malfurion. This was delivered to them in the aftermath of the Argus's defeat and Sargeras' imprisonment. Tyrande, long ago you trusted me enough to defy Malfurion's wishes and free me from a prison. But over time that faith was lost, and like my brother you came to believe that the choices I made had driven me to darkness. Know that every path I took led towards a single purpose, saving our world. I could abide no health measures, no compromise. At those times when I faced doubt, I held true to one constant, one anchor, you. You have always embodied the best of Azeroth, Teranda, your faith, your devotion, through the darkest time my belief in you never wavered. My faith, my duty are now clear to me. I leave Azeroth's defense to you and to my brother. Take care of him, Tyrande. Though at times I wish your heart had made a different choice, in the end I know it made the right one. Malfurion, even in the womb we grapple with one another, struggle has followed us all our lives. The teachings of scenarios were always your path. I felt another calling. It was power assault, but not to conquer or rule. It was a means to an end, to save Azeroth from an unstoppable foe. You never trusted my intentions, though I suppose I did not make it easy for you. But now, as my fate becomes clear, I wish to quiet the strife that has long divided us. Even when the Legion is gone, new threats will arise. There is no one I trust to face them more than you, brother. You have spent a lifetime fighting for the dream of what Azeroth could be. Now you must fight for what it is. Take care of Tyrande, listen to her counsel. She was always the best of us. The road ahead will be long. Whatever comes, bring honor to the name Stormrage. But with the wounds Argeras inflicted on Silithus and Azeroth herding, it was not the time to ponder personal regrets. Malfurion declared that they must focus on healing the world, and that's what the champions of Azeroth did. While the heroes returned home to the world, Illidan chose to remain behind, becoming Sargeras' jailer, stating that a hunter is nothing without the hand. Tyrande and Malfurion met with Anduin to discuss the Nidal's progress in healing Azeroth and their investigations about Azerite. The Archdruid explained that the Scenarion Circle sent Druids to Silithus to assess the damage, but they perished due to Sargeras' destruction. Upon hearing of their deaths, Tyrande dispatched priestesses of Elune to aid, but they faced challenges in creating moonwells due to goblin interference. Despite this, the Nidalos managed to collect samples of Azerite to study. Malfurion assured Anduin that while recognizing Azerite's great potency, they pledged to prevent its misuse, to the best of their abilities. After learning from SI7 reports that the Horde was deliberating the conquest of Silithus, the High Priestess and King Anduin deduced that the Horde aimed to control Azerite reserves in Kalimdor. When further reports came in and confirmed Warchief Sylvana's Windrunner's endorsement on the Silithus campaign, Tyrande proposed to deploy her army to deter the Horde and King Anduin agreed. 
Meanwhile, as Teranda assisted in planning the upcoming war in Storm with Sinti, and the Nidal flea was en route to Silithus, the horse saw an opening to attack Ashenvale, leaving only Malfurion to defend it. Learning of the invasion, the Alliance leaders realized the horse's deception in weakening Ashenvale's defenses, and in response, they coordinate efforts to evacuate refugees to Stormwind and reinforce the Ashenvale warfront. Tyrande was planning to join her husband, but prioritized attending to refugees first. Malfurion, on the other hand, was trying to evacuate the civilians of Darnassus and Darkshore and sending them over to Stormwind. With enough luck, the Night Elf defenders hoped to buy enough time for the evacuation until reinforcements arrived to repel the Horde. Captain Delorin Summermoon managed to delay the Horde for a while, but eventually they overcame her defenses. At some point, she tried to lure Sorfang out of the inn to make an ambush, but the orc sensed the trap and was about to return to safety. However, Malfurion arrived just in time to suddenly strike at Sorfang, causing enough chaos for Summermoon's forces to take the Horn Guards by surprise. Malfurion managed to overpower Sorfang in a battle and snare him with roots, leaving him helpless as the inn was about to collapse on himself. But just in time, Sylvanas intervened, forcing him to retreat with the Night Elf defenders. Malfurion stood his ground against the invaders, including Sylvanas, using roots and a wall of wisps to hold them off. But sometime in the late stages of the War of the Thorns, Malfurion's wisp wall defense failed and he went off to confront Sylvanas alone. Through a missive, he explained his plan to assassinate Sylvanas and bid farewell to Tyranda. He fought fiercely with Sylvanas outside Lornadel, nearly besting her. However, Sorfang intervened, striking Malfurion from behind and severely injuring him. Despite remorse for his dishonorable act, Sorfang couldn't bring himself to deliver the final blow, even after the Banshee's orders. Teranda, arriving just in the nick of time, managed to heal Malfurion's severe wound, rescuing him from the edge of death. She defeated Sorfang, but grateful for sparing her husband's life, Teranda chose to show mercy, allow him to live. Together with Malfurion, she made her way back to Stormwind, where Malfurion made a full recovery. Despite their efforts, the Horde burned down Teldrassil, thus resulting in devastating losses for the Night Elf race and the Alliance. Later, Shandris, Maiev and Sira Moonwarden appealed to Anduin to launch an assault on Darkshore and reclaim it from the Horde. However, given the ongoing conflicts in Zandalar, Arathi and Kaltiras, Anduin lacked the necessary forces for such an operation. Undeterred, Teranda, learning of this, decided to lead the charge to retake Darkshore with the available army. On her way, Tyranda's ship was ambushed by the Horde and she fled north, leaving behind her bow and a book detailing the dangerous Night Warrior ritual. Legend spoke of the Night Warrior as a loon's wrath incarnate, used by Nadals to expand their empire. The ritual itself was perilous, with none surviving the attempt due to Elune's overwhelming power. Despite the risks, Teranda successfully completed the ritual and transformed into the Night Warrior, fueled by Elune's fury. Seeking vengeance for the burning of Teldrassil, she went to confront Nathanos Brightcrawler on the shore, blaming herself for allowing Sorfang to leave. On the beach, Delorin and Sira were found dead, with Nathanos and Tuvalkir attempting to raise them. Teranda intervened, joined later by Malfurion, but they did not make it in time. In response to this, Teranda angrily slew one Valkyr and prompting a whole retreat. The two fallen elves were successfully resurrected as Dark Rangers, and despite Teranda's efforts to convince them not to give in to darkness, they blamed her and Elun for abandoning them, thus eventually declaring allegiance to the Forsaken. She appointed Maiev to lead in Darkshore, prioritizing their king's future over their complicated history. In the subsequent battle for Darkshore, Malfurion rallied the ancients and nature spirits to assist the Alliance in reclaiming their land and fighting their enemies. While the Alliance leaders confronted Sylvanas in Orgrimmar, Teranda was leading the army of the Black Moon in Darkshore and ignored Anduin's missives. The Night Warrior's primary focus was on reclaiming Darkshore, and they successfully did that. The battle ultimately ended in the Alliance's favor, with the Black Moon forces decimating the Horde troops, leaving Darkshore itself in Calderai hands once again. After the Fourth War ended, Teranda attended the peace treaty in Stormwind, although she wasn't happy at all. She even interrupted Anduin's speech, emphasizing the Horde's unaddressed crimes and their unreliability. She challenged the Boy King's faith in the Horde, questioning how he would feel if Stormwind faced a similar fate as Darkshore. 
Toronto refused to sign any treaty unless it was sealed in Banshee's blood, firmly opposing the Horde. Following Nizot's defeat, Malfurio, Tyranda and the Nidals resettled in Nordrasil. Despite receiving Anduin's letters, they chose to ignore them. Sensing a disturbance in the spirit world, though, they agreed to meet with Thrall, one of the few individuals they placed their trust in the Horde's ranks. Thrall apologized to the Nidals on behalf of the Horde and pledged to bring justice by offering Sylvanas' head. The Night Warrior demanded action rather than empty promises. Maiev conveyed to Tyranda that she has spent her life consumed by vengeance, and while there wasn't any affection between them, she still wished Tyranda wouldn't follow the same dark path as she did. When the scourge began ravaging Azeroth after the fall of the Lich King, Tyranda was determined to find Sylvanas to answer about her crimes. She ended up encountering Sylvanas' right-hand man, Nathanos, at his hometown in Marie's stead. With the enhanced power of the Night Warrior, she ambushed and easily overpowered the Banshee Queen's champion. Despite attempting to extract information about Sylvanas from him, Nathanos provided only cryptic responses, suggesting that killing him would only lead him to Sylvanas. His taunts fell on deaf ears as Tyranda abruptly ended his life and resumed her pursuit. Tyranda joined the Alliance leaders and Bolvan Four Dragon at Ice Crown Citadel to discuss their plan. When Lord Themar Theron expressed concerns about risking lives, Tyranda labeled him a coward and vowed to pay any price to defeat Sylvanas. Kalia urged her to consider peace for the Calderai's sake, but that enraged Tyranda even more, given the Forsaken's atrocities during the Fourth War. Ignoring Gen's pleas to stay behind, Tyranda charged into the mall, determined to confront the Banshee Queen. Isera, now residing in Ardenwill after her heartfelt death during the Legion's invasion, began experiencing troubling dreams of Night Elf souls tormented in the mall. With Isera's guidance, Shandris and a Night Fade champion venture into the mall to find Tyranda. Despite their efforts, though, she refused to leave as long as their people were suffering in Torgas. As they pursued Tyranda through the tower, her unyielding pursuit of vengeance raised concerns about whether the Night Warrior's influence was consuming her. They eventually confronted a torture amalgamation of countless Nidal souls, and after granting them release, Tyranda swore to avenge them. Despite Shendry's pleas, Tyranda refused to stop her hand until Sylvanas was dead and chose to remain in the mall. Once they brought the saved Nidals to Ardenwild, Isera mentioned she had uh, heard a promising whisper regarding someone who could assist Tyranda, a former night warrior named Thirnax, and so she decided to go and meet him. They devised a plan to save Tyranda by channeling a loom's power with the aid of former night warriors hidden in the Shadowlands. As the Battle of Ardenwill reached its climax, Tyranda emerged from a more portal and confronted Sylvanas. During their heated fight, she disclosed her killing of Nathanos and hinted at Sylvanas' master's hidden secrets. As the battle progressed, the night warriors' powers began to wane, allowing Sylvanas to escape. Then Isera arrived to aid Tyranda with Chandris hoping for her stabilization. Luckily, with the Covenants working closely together now, they discover more Night Warriors, leading to a gathering at the Grove of Awakening to begin the ritual. During the ritual to free Tyranda from the Night Warriors' influence, she grew hostile and even attacked her own daughter. Eventually, Elun took control of Tyranda and communicated with the Winter Queen, expressing horror at the fate of her people in the Maw. The Winter Queen assured Elun that they could guide those souls to renewal, starting with Tyranda herself, if she would of course choose that fate. In the end, Tyranda went with peace instead of vengeance, and in return Elun's power were stabilized and she was saved. By using a single tear shed by a loon while she was in control of Tyranda, the Winter Queen and a loon crafted the powerful artifact Sister's Tear, which led to the restoration of the heart of the forest in Ardenwild. After the jailer's defeat, Sylvanas faced judgment at Oribos Crucible. Many powerful figures attended the trial, with Tyranda, Chandris, and Maiev present. Sylvanas accepted full responsibility for her crimes and submitted to Tyranda's judgment. Though initially distrustful, Tyranda threatened Sylvanas with her glaive, but the Banshee Queen remained calm, understanding Tyranda's stance. The priestess emphasized that remorse couldn't erase Sylvanas' atrocities and that peace for her victim souls was paramount. The Arbiter granted Tyranda the authority to decide Sylvanas' fate, acknowledging that her people had suffered the worst from the Banshee's actions. 
Teranda insisted that Sylvanas must begin her penance by freeing the souls trapped in the mall. This will bring renewal to the Banshee Queen's victims and began atoning for the burning of Teldrassil. Sylvanas agreed and leapt into the mall to fulfill her task. Teranda later reflects that sparing Sylvanas was what allowed for this redemption and perhaps was influenced by her goddess Elune. Sometime later, Teranda was summoned by the Winter Queen where she was questioned if she had found the justice she sought. The priestess admitted that she was initially looking for vengeance but had found hope within the groves and the light of Elune. Then the Queen presented the sister's tear, explaining how it would transform from sorrow into a vessel of renewal. The souls saved from the mob rejected internal tranquility to become a new beginning for their king. The Winter Queen offered the seed to Tyranda, who accepted it on behalf of her people. In the aftermath, Isera revealed that the seed had been touched by the dream, symbolizing the cycle of death and life. She suggested that the seed should be taken to her daughter Merithra, as she will know its rightful place. When she was asked if she would return to Azeroth, Isera explained that she was bound to Ardenwild and could not live without a great sacrifice. If it was Elune's will, she would once again soar Azeroth's skies, but for the time being she would remain in the Shadowlands. After the rediscovery of the Dragon Isles, the couple entrusted the sister's tear to Merithra, who then took it to the Emerald Dream and planted it for safety. Guarded by the green dragonflight and the defenders of the dream, it peacefully grew into a majestic war tree. Continuing their quest to restore Isera to life, Teranda and Malfurion, together with Merithra's son, Gerithus, journeyed to Ardenwild. Teranda pleaded with Isera to name any prize for her revival, emphasizing the need for her and her flight. However, Isera didn't respond. At that moment, Malfurion understood that for Isera to return, he must take her place in death. Tyranda initially rejected this idea, but Malfurion explained that when Isera sacrificed herself for him in Valshara, it wasn't her time, and now balance could be restored. Tyranda, in return, pointed out how tired she was after enduring so much and after many years being apart from each other. Despite her weariness, Malfurio reassured his wife of her strength and the unwavering support of their people. He reminded her that they will always follow her lead and she will never be alone. Reluctantly, Tyranda agreed to stay in Shadowlands as well, leaving Shandris and the others to lead the Nidals. The group sought the aid of the Winter Queen, who, after some hesitation, agreed to transfer the bond from Isera to Malfurion. As Malfurion took Isera's place and entered a deep slumber, he echoed the words he once spoke to Tyranda during the Battle of Mount Hyja. Whatever comes, my love, remember, our bond is eternal. As the time approached for the tree to emerge from the cradle of the Emerald Plain and materialize into the physical world, the Primalists set their sights on it. The Druids of the Flame, led by the incarnate Firak, managed to breach the boundaries of the Emerald Dream. However, instead of seeking its destruction, Firak sought to infuse the tree with the living flame, intending to spread it across all of Azeroth and reshape the world in eternal fire. Despite his mastery over Shadow Flame, the blazing incarnate was defeated before he could corrupt Amidrasil's core. This allowed the tree to complete its blooming and manifest into the world. In doing so, Azeroth herself re-empowered the aspects, marking a new beginning for the dragon kind. At the base of Amidrasil, Belameth rose to prominence, serving as the new capital city for the Night Elves. And that brings us to the aftermath of Dragonflight, where the Emerald Dream is secured and Merithra appointed as the new aspect of the Green Dragonflight. Following this and knowing that the Green Dragons are under the care of her beloved daughter, Isera decides to return to Ardenwild. She then renews her bond with the Winter Queen and as a result allows for Malfurion to return. At long last, Malfurion awakens from his slumber and reunites with his beloved wife in Amirdrasil, where they share a very tender moment. Despite facing countless trials and their love enduring so much through the ages, these two souls finally found their way back to each other. Shandris embraces her parents who appoint her as the new Night Elf leader while they decide to retire in Belameth. And thus concludes the epic tale of Tyranda Whisperwind and Malfurion Stone Rage, at least of what we know so far. 
but as one chapter closes, another begins, for Azeroth is ever fraught with new challenges. If you've made it this far, oh my, you are truly a legend. If you enjoyed delving into their story, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe and ring the bell for more content like this. Thank you for joining me on this journey, good luck with whatever you are doing and I will see you all on the next one. Bye!